Are you ready to learn Jerome Bruner's theory of learning? Welcome to my first ever vlog. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. It is one of the first proponents of constructivism. Learning is an active process in which learners construct new ideas or concepts based upon their current or past knowledge. Brunner's main concepts. There are three representations. First is inactive. At the earliest ages, children learn about the whole world through actions on physical objects and the outcome of these objects. The second representation is iconic. Learning can be obtained through using models and pictures. Third is symbolic. The learner has developed the ability to think in abstract terms. The second main concept is prior curriculum. Teaching should always lead to boosting cognitive development. Student will not understand the concept if teacher plans to teach it using only the teacher's level of understanding. Third is discovery learning. Refers to obtaining knowledge for oneself. Learning becomes more meaningful when students explore their learning. Environment rather than listen passively to teacher. Principles of Instruction Stated by Brunner Instruction must be concerned with the experiences and context that makes the student willing and able to learn. Instruction must be structured so that it can be easily grasped by the student. Instruction should be designed to facilitate extrapolation and or fill in the gaps. There are four major aspects of theory of instruction. First is predisposition to learn, readiness for learning. Two, structure of knowledge, refers to the ways in which a body of knowledge can be structured so that it can be most readily grasped by the learner. Three, effective sequencing. No one sequencing will fit every learner, but in general, the lesson can be presented in increasing difficulty. Fourth is reinforcement. Rewards and punishments should be selected and paced appropriately. Bruners gave much attention to categorization of information in the construction of internal cognitive maps. He believed that perception, conceptualization, learning, and decision making all involve categorization. There are three kinds of categories. First is identity categories. Categories include objects based on their attributes or features. Second is equivalent categories. Equivalence can be determined by effective criteria which render objects equivalent by emotional reactions, functional criteria based on related function. Last is coding systems, categories that serve to recognize sensory input. Information processing theory. Information processing is a cognitive theoretical framework that focuses on how knowledge enters and is stored in and is retrieved from our memory. It is one of the most significant cognitive theories in the last century, and it has strong implications on the teaching learning process. IPT describe how the learner receives information from the environment through the senses and what takes place in between determines whether the information will continue to pass through the sensory register than the short-term memory and the long-term memory. Types of Knowledge General versus specific. This involves whether the knowledge is useful in many tasks or in only one. Declarative refers to a factual knowledge. Can be in the form of word or image. Procedural includes knowledge on how to do things. Conditional. This is about knowing when and why to apply declarative or procedural strategies. Three main stage in the memory process. 
First is sensory register. It's the first step in the IP model holds all sensory information for a very brief time. Number two, executive control process. The ECP involved the executive processor or what is referred to as metacognitive skills. Three, forgetting. It is the inability to retrieve or access information when needed. First is decay. Information is not attended to and eventually fades away. Interference. New or old information blocks access to the information in question. Transfer of learning. Simply put, it is applying to another situation what was previously learned. Types of transfer. Positive transfer occurs when learning in one context improves performance in some other context. Negative transfer occurs when learning in one context impacts negatively on performance in one another. Near transfer refer to transfer between very similar contexts referred to as specific transfer. Far transfer, also called general transfer, refers to transfer between contexts that on appearance seem remote and alien to one another. That's all and thanks for watching.